I always park facing the wrong way because this is the way I go to work in the morning and my wife parks in the driveway so I have nowhere else to park. I wonder if this is legal or not. Legal or not, parking the wrong way. The short answer is no, you cannot. And uh, the way that the state in Montgomery County uh, defines it is, is parking opposite flow of traffic. Um, you, you cannot park on the opposite side of the roadway with your left tires on the curb um, on any public roadway in the state. Uh, the only exception to that would be on a one-way street where it allows for parking on both sides of that street. And, and in fact, in downtown Rockville, we have a street like that at the courthouse where you can. But if it's signed that you cannot, then it, it still is a violation. And it's a $60 fine in Montgomery County. When, when you were thinking about uh, why this law is in effect in the county, um, one can only conclude that in order to park on the opposite flow of traffic on that curb, you would actually have to cross the entire roadway and, and make your, your parking. Uh, and then when you are leaving from your parking spot, it would also require you to drive in the wrong direction on that road in order to get back onto the roadway in the proper direction to continue up that road. My wife was right, again, it is illegal to park this way and it's a crapshoot if I continue, I could get a ticket. So, I better change the direction. If my teenager throws a party without my permission and something illegal happens, am I responsible? Legal or not, teen parties. Teenager throwing a party when the parents aren't home is every parent's nightmare. If this happens, the parent is not criminally responsible, but if any activity resulting from the party causes a civil lawsuit, the parent is civilly responsible. So it is important, again, always to impress on your teenagers to be responsible when you're not at home. So I learned as a parent, if our kid throws a party without our permission, we are not criminally responsible, but we could be subject to a civil lawsuit. But if we knowingly served alcohol to underage children at a party at our home, we could be arrested. So as you can see, parking around here is really crowded. I'm going to use the fire lane, and I just need to run a quick errand, I'm going to be right back. How illegal is this? Legal or not, parking in a fire lane. Fire lanes uh, are designed, they have been put there uh, for a specific reason. Uh, the, the reason is emergency access. I'd like to share with the community the importance of understanding why a fire engine needs to get to your community. And it's not just about the fire emergency. In Montgomery County, we are privileged to have four-person staffing on our fire engines. Our fire chief, Richie Bowers, has made that a top priority. And as such, the fourth person on these fire engines behind me is a paramedic. So when you call 911 for that medical emergency or that fire emergency, you're going to get not only a transport unit with one paramedic on it, but you're going to also get the closest fire engine that has one paramedic on it. So please, don't park in fire lanes because we need to get to you. So Captain Feisner explained that both ambulances and fire trucks are about 10 feet wide and these fire lanes need to be kept wide open. There's simply not enough room for a regular vehicle and the emergency equipment. I also found out later that the fine for parking in a fire lane is $250. I'm leaving for the weekend and it's supposed to snow. What if I'm not here and can't shovel my sidewalk? Is there a fine for that? Legal or not, 
not shoveling snow on sidewalks. There is a law that requires property owners, not any particular individual, but property owners of commercial or residential property to clear snow within 24 hours after the end of a snowfall, unless the county executive uh, makes an exception for that and extends the time, and which he can do in the event of a large snowfall, and which has been done. And the goal here is pedestrian safety, winter safety. We need our sidewalks to be accessible. We need people in wheelchairs to be able to get around. Uh, the, it's a complaint-based system. The county uh, just wants to see that it happened. We, the county is not interested in finding people. The county is interested in, uh, in encouraging people to uh, do their civic responsibility to ensure that sidewalks in front of their property and parking lots, in the case of commercial owners, are passable and safe uh, reasonably soon after a snowstorm. Someone needs help okay. and can't do it themselves. The uh, Montgomery County Volunteer Center is where I would suggest people call to see if, and they have a lot of volunteers that come through that center, to see if there are volunteers who would be available uh, to help people who can't uh, shovel the sidewalk themselves to do so. If you're not home uh, when it snows, you're on vacation, say, or uh, away, it is important to make arrangements with neighbors uh, to have uh, the snow cleared uh, in your absence. So I learned there's a law that you have to shovel your sidewalk within 24 hours. It's not so the police can fine you, it's really just to make it safe for pedestrians. If I'm unable to do it for, say, a health issue, I should call the volunteer center. And if I'm out of town, which I'm going to be, I need to make arrangements for somebody else to clear the snow. It's also a great reason to get to know your neighbors. Should I leave my car idling? Someone once told me it causes pollution. I'm not sure whether it's legal or not to leave my car idling like this in the driveway. Legal or not, leaving a car idling. The short answer is no. The legal requirement for a driver before he or she leaves her vehicle is to stop the engine lock the ignition, set the parking brake, and remove the key from the ignition. This is something that we run into particularly during the winter months when people like to warm up their cars before they leave from work. We do also see it in the summer months when someone wants to leave their air conditioning running while they're just running in to, uh, for an errand at a convenience store. But a car can be and has been stolen in a matter of seconds. We've had cars stolen from the homeowner's driveway simply because they started that ignition, their car is unlocked, and they've gone back inside. Many times there are young people who are looking to take these cars for joy rides, but they can also then be used for criminal activity. We've also had instances where a baby that's been left inside a car is stolen along with the car when someone just leaves that car still running trying to make a quick errand and then with perfect intention of coming back quickly, it only takes seconds for that car to be stolen. Sorry. Typically, police are not going to find out that a car has been stolen until after it's been stolen. Then we find out that the owner has left the car with the engine running and been away from it for just a short period of time. So again, it is extremely important for everyone to understand it's their responsibility to shut off that engine, lock the ignition key, set the brake, and take your key with you before you leave your car unattended. So what I learned that it is illegal to leave your car idling in the driveway, but it's not because of pollution. So I've turned off my engine and locked the car because police say that even an idling car in your own driveway can be stolen. But please make sure that you don't leave any children or pets in the car. This is a nice gun my grandfather gave me. 
You know, I was thinking about it. I wonder if it's legal or not, if I have this in the house. Legal or not, keeping a gun at home. Yes, you are allowed to keep a gun at home, but there are a lot of restrictions. And it not, it not only has to do with Montgomery County, it has to do with the state of Maryland. It has to do with the United States. There are many different laws, federal, local, and state, that you need to pay attention to. First of all, you're allowed to keep a rifle or a shotgun in your home. Uh, with, but within the home. You can't carry it around on the street, obviously. You're allowed to keep certain types of handguns in your home. The important thing to remember when you are allowed to keep these weapons in your home, you have to keep a safety device on them if you have children. If you have anyone under the age of 16, you need to have some sort of locking device on the weapon so that young folks can't get that weapon out and cause harm to themselves or someone else. Some of the most tragic stories you'll see in the news are when small children or even teenagers who don't know any better get one of these weapons out and they kill themselves, they kill a friend, or they kill a family member. So important to remember when you are allowed to take, when you are allowed to keep a firearm in your home, which many you are, that you have it locked up and you practice good gun safety with your family. Make sure that, that uh, even the youngest uh, individuals in the home understand what good, good gun safety is about. Uh, if you want to find out more about what weapons are prohibited, what weapons you can't, for example, a machine gun. Not everyone's allowed to have a machine gun. Um, there's also different regulations for antique firearms made before a certain point of time. There's many regulations on the transfer of firearms between different people. You need to know the law. The internet is a great resource because of lo a lot of our laws are now online. So I learned that in the state of Maryland, it is legal to own a gun, but there are many rules and restrictions that come with owning one. If there are children in the house, you have to have a safety lock. Uh, you can get a safety lock here, or you can have a cable that comes through the tube and through your chamber that locks it out. And since in the state of Maryland there are so many rules and regulations on owning a firearm, you really want to go online and check. I saw on the back of a truck one time it said, safety is no accident. Someone's parked in front of my house again and taken my spot. It really is annoying when you don't have your own spot to park, and now I have to go up and park up in the block. I wonder if it's legal for them to park there. Legal or not, reserving a parking spot. It would be nice to think that neighbors could get along and utilize all the road uh, so that everybody could get a parking spot. However, there is no law that specifically indicates that you're entitled to the parking spots or the road in front of your house. So no, you do not have that uh, entitlement of being your parking spot. Um, however, uh, a lot of times we receive phone calls uh, to our non-emergency number to come out to enforce similar uh, parking complaints like this. And when we get out there, what we do notice is there might not be a violation as indicated from the question. However, what we come across is unregistered motor vehicles or unregistered trailers that are parked in front of neighbors' houses or in front of the person's house that that actually resides at, at the residence. Uh, and what happens is, um, is we end up enforcing those laws. And what people need to remember is that if you're gonna park a motor vehicle on a county road or in a road uh, in, the, uh, in the state of Maryland, it needs to be registered. Um, so any vehicle that needs to be registered to be driven or pulled in the state must be registered and, and uh, properly to be parked in front of your house. Some neighborhoods uh, in the county have specific permits for parking in their neighborhood. So it's all oftentimes important to remember that um, just because you want to park in a neighborhood doesn't mean you're always legally allowed to do that. And you, you have to look for the signs to make sure that that parking is not restricted by the residents or the neighborhood where you're, you're parking.
Well, surprisingly, I found out that the person can park in front of my house, and I have no recourse. I don't own that spot.